Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here, and today I'm going to show you some interesting semi-auto alternatives to the RFB for early ranged play, now that M80 has been moved up to Peacekeeper 3. In the category of DMR style gameplay, the RFB was just the clear choice previously, as once you had enough trader rep for Skier 2, you could access both him and Peacekeeper at level 2. This allowed you to purchase the RFB for 55,000 rubles, M80 from Peacekeeper at $3, along with a 20 round magazine to give you plenty of firepower. Now that M80 has been bumped up a level, we're left looking at BCP FMJ and TCW SP, which, don't get me wrong, aren't terrible rounds, but at range, what you really need is for shots that connect to really count. These two run the risk of being absorbed by class 4 armour like the ever popular 6B3TM and bouncing from class 4 helmets like the TC2000 series, something which M80 just doesn't suffer from until well over 100 metres. Clearly we could just buy M80 from the flea, but with prices super volatile, a 20 round magazine could cost you 40k in ammo alone, which is nearly as much as the gun, and that's assuming that you can buy it at all. So there's a few criteria that we have to match if we're going to replace the functionality of the RFB with another weapon, which is primarily the stats of the rounds. We're looking for decent damage, let's say 50 plus, decent penetration, ideally above 40, high velocity as it's really hard to connect longer range shots with slow bullets, and naturally the weapons that the round is compatible with because this will determine our choice of optics which we're going to need for this kind of shooting. The most obvious one that comes to mind is the SKS with PS ammo, as it has good damage and relatively quick rounds at 700 meters per second. The base weapon is fairly cheap, and we have some easy ways to reach out with this gun, for example using the PSO. The main problem here is the penetration. With PS we have the same issues that we have with TCW, as 35 is just a bit too low, meaning over range we're going to have to require multiple Thorax shots to take down class 4 users, which is not ideal. Although the SKS probably isn't the answer, there is one big advantage to it for longer range shooting, and this also answers the usual question of why not the VPO 136 as well at the same time, which is how the camera recoil is set at the moment. Although the RFB does feel snappier on returning to its centre point, the SKS's higher camera recoil actually works in our favour when using the various optics, because the eyeline of our PMC remains along the axis of the scope more closely. This leaves our target in view, whereas on the RFB, and incidentally on the 136 as well, the entire scope gets blacked out and you can't see anything whilst the weapon recenters itself. Settings can have an effect on these scope representations, so just for reference I have my FOV set to 64. So along with that, we haven't addressed all of the issues here either, and the SKS's accuracy is over 2, which is manageable but not super ideal. Continuing along with more traditional guns, another clear choice is the SVD. This weapon has always been a bit of a beast, only losing out to the 308 weapons later on due to lack of recoil improvements in the later stages of a patch. With the basic LPS round from Prapple 1 dealing 81 damage with 42 penetration, a speed of 865 meters per second, and the SVD being a classic mid-range weapon already, it's actually a pretty good choice. The major downside to this gun is that because it is needed for the Punisher series finale, part 6, 100% durability versions tend to be very expensive to buy on the flea market as the whole player base is trying to buy them. We can only get them from Prapor himself at trader level 3, and even then it's for just over 90k, a pricey proposition, although it does do what we want it to. If you do go down this route, for an extra 20k you can boost the ergonomics by swapping out the handguard for an XRS DRG, Peacekeeper's cheap Ergo foregrip, the VFG, and the Saw pistol grip. If you have Jaeger 3 and Mechanic 2, you can also use the relatively new stock adapter to attach the Troy stock, which is really cheap because generally it's total garbage, but it gives some of the highest Ergo in the game, which we kinda need on non-meta SVDs more than the recoil improvements. Unless you're trying to engage at distances over 200 meters, I'd personally just stick to LPS rather than use the PS round, although this is at Prapple 3 anyway, so normally we don't get that choice. I have another video planned on why this is the case, so look out for that one in the future. The final round that I think there is a case for is one that I'm usually a big fan of, which is APM. This round is a great comparable round to M80, as it has 90 damage and 42 pen, which is actually better on both by 10 and 1 point. While you can't get it from the traders until Mechanic 3, you are able to craft it in the hideout at Workbench 2, which requires at least level 20 for Mechanic 2 to upgrade it there. Hopefully you kept some SP6 from various quests and looting because it's a required ingredient, and is not available until Prapple 3, and is not sellable on the flea market either. It is possible to make it yourself, but at this point the crafting cycle is getting very, very long. The base time of just over 9 hours for the SP6 craft, and then another 7 hours for the APM. 
At least the first SP6 craft gives you 300 rounds. That is enough to last through six sets of APM crafts because you only need 50 per go. You will be forgoing some opportunity cost of crafting another profitable item in the workbench, but if you're going to use the APM then it can be worth it. APM is still sellable on the flea market too, but like M80 it's pretty expensive. Due to the existence of the craft, the supply is at least a bit better, but right now it's still worth well over a thousand rubles per round. This price is about right though. The most efficient craft changes as prices fluctuate, but running the numbers quickly with wires, which are one of the better crafts, if you get your power cords for 40k and sell your wires for 21,000, which I'm fairly easily doing right now, this nets you 88k, and with the flea fee of 32,000 gets me to 56,000 rubles of profit. The APM craft gives 100 rounds. This costs 48,500 for 50 SP6 using the price of 973 from Prepl3, 14,500 rubles for 100 PS rounds using 145 rubles per round at Prepl1, and one kite which we're going to estimate is about 13k from the flea. This totals 76,200 or 762 rubles per round. To this we need to add on the effective loss of 56,000 rubles or 560 per round that we didn't get from a missing wires craft overnight that we used to do this craft instead and that comes to 1,322 rubles per APM ammo produced. One point to bear in mind here is that we've used the prep or cost of SP6 but if you have it lying around in your stash you are never going to use it, it's not like you can sell it anyway so it never really costs that for you to use up. Whether you do decide to craft it or buy it, it's still a relatively expensive option before Mechanic 3. Two other rounds that I think are interesting are two of the more regular rifle rounds. BT with its newly buffed penetration of 40 at least holds up on that front, and although the damage is low at 42 for this kind of purpose, you can access it through two barters on Prep or 2 as well as purchase it directly on the flea market. The prices aren't too bad if you're intending on firing these on semi-auto and combined with the new SAG AK which has high ergo, a snappy feel to its shooting and a great accuracy stat may make up for the lack of damage. I've not had extensive experience with it yet since the buff but 40 penetration versus 37 over distance does make a big difference. Now that we're only dipping below 37 at 150 meters, this is the 50-50 chance of penetrating class 4 armor. The other one that is also a contender is M856A1. For 5.56 weapons instead, this has always been a good mid-game round and is typically more of a staple piece of ammunition once completing Peacekeeper's Cult Part 1, but with the availability of a craft, again at Workbench 2, this comes out to 425 rubles per shot, which is quite cheap. We're missing out on opportunity cost again, but this is still under a thousand rubles, and as it's not sellable on the fleet, there is really no other way to get this. 56A1 goes the other way to BT, as the penetration of 37 is kind of on the threshold of where we need it, but the damage of 54, which was increased a little bit recently too, is really very decent for an intermediate cartridge. Now in terms of what weapon pairs well with this, personally I think the AK-101 is severely underappreciated at the moment. If you search through all 556 weapons by using a linked search on the rounds, filtering for 100 durability and checking out the options, this section is littered with pristine 101s. One of the biggest advantages of the 101 is its default velocity. This is higher than all of the other 556 weapons at stock and is only beaten by combining long barrels and close to meta suppressors on guns like the HK416. Not to mention, with an MOA of 1.56, the 101 is pretty accurate too for an assault rifle and it also benefits from the AK platform's cheap modding as well. If you can manage with the slightly lower penetration of 56A1, the 101 can be a great choice, sometimes even an advantage for quests like Shooterborne because of the inverse logic that comes from body shots being less likely to kill. This means that you increase your chances of getting a headshot, which is all the quest cares about in that case. So as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video, and as always, have fun in your raids.